Hello everyone and thank you for attending this talk. I'm Stefano Garzarella, I'm a senior software engineer in the Red Hat virtualization team. Today we'll take a look on how to speed up VMs IO sharing OS IO Uring queues with guests. This is the agenda of the talk. First of all, we'll take an overview of IO Uring, looking at the system codes, how the queues are organized, and some interesting features like resource registration and poly. Then we look at QEMU and how we use it IO Uring. At that point, we'll see how to speed up VirtIO block sharing IO Uring queues directly with a guest. We'll also see some alternatives to this approach like vhost block and vdpa block, and we'll compare them. Finally, we'll talk about next steps. IO Uring is a new Linux interface between user space and kernel to do asynchronous IO. It's not only oriented to block operation, but it's evolved like a generic interface to do asynchronous system calls. The interface consists of a pair of rings allocated by the kernel and shared with the user space. One ring is used by the application to submit new requests to do, and it's called Submission Queue, SQ. The other ring, called Completion Queue, CQ, is used by the kernel to return to the user the result of the submitted request. There are three system calls exposed by IO Uring that we are going to explore. The, the first one is IO Uring Setup. It's the first system call to invoke to set up the context for performing asynchronous IO. Several flags and parameters can be specified, such as the ring size. It returns a file descriptor that identifies the context and it must be used with the other system calls. The second one is IO Uring Register. This system call is also used during the initialization phase of the rings, or even afterwards to change registered stuff, but it's not used in the critical part. We will talk more about it in a few slides. The last one is IO Uring Enter. It's the most used system call during the life cycle of the context because it's used to initiate and uh, or to complete a synchronous IO. So with a single system call, we can submit new operation to do and reap operations done using the rings that we are going to see in the next slides. The submission queue is used by the application to submit new requests, producing a new SQ entry SQE, that contains the operation to do and its parameters, like file descriptor, buffer address, offset, etc. When the application has one or more SQE ready, it increases the tail and calls IO Uring Enter to pass control to the kernel. At this point, the kernel consumes SQE, updates the head, and it schedules the works to execute the operation requested. The kernel will process the operation, schedule, and when they are done, it prepares a new CQ entry, CQE, for each submitted request that contains the result of the operation requested. The CQE we also contains the same user data value specified by the application in the corresponding SQE. So it's an opaque value for the kernel and can be used by the application to match the result with the submitted operation. The kernel increases the tail of the completion queue when it adds new CQE. And the application will consume CQEs, moving the head and checking the result of the operation submitted with the same user data. For each request, the kernel must take an internal reference to the file pointed by the file descriptor and release it when the operation is done. It also needs to map and unmap every time for each request the user buffer in the kernel virtual memory. In order to reduce the overhead for each request, 
If the application has a set of file descriptors and user buffers used very often, we can pre-register them with the higher Euring register system code and use an index in the SQE. In this way, the kernel already has the reference and it used that index to get it. This system call can be used also to register other resources like an event FD to receive notification when some request is completed. Or it can be used to probe by your Euring to get information about the code supported by the running kernel. It can be also used to register personality to issue SQE with certain credentials. Or, as we can see later, to register restriction and enable ring processing. Another cool feature provided by IO Euring is the polling. We have the possibility to enable the SQ polling and IO polling. In the first case, a kernel thread is created to poll the submission queue, avoiding the needs of system call to pass control to the kernel. An idle time is configurable, so if the kernel thread is idle for more than a configured time, it goes to sleep and the application must call IO Euring Enter with a special flag to wake up the kernel thread. When this feature is enabled, potentially the application can submit and reheap requests without doing a single system call. We can also enable IO polling, doing busy wait for IO completion instead of waiting for an asynchronous notification, such as an interrupt from the device. This feature can be used only if the device or the file system support block IO polling. Starting from QEMU 5.0, released in April this year, IO Euring is available in the QEMU Asynchronous IO subsystem. Thanks to Arushi, Yulia, and Stefan, we have a new AIO engine that we can use with a dash drive option. The engine will do the standard block IO operation, read, write, fsync, in the synchronous way, using the IO Euring queues and operations. Now let's go into the main topic of the talk. So how to speed up block IO in QMU. This is the starting point. We have a vert IO block device emulated in QMU that uses the IO Euring AIO engine to do block operation. So we have two communication channels, a vert queue between gas kernel and QMU and IO Euring queues between QMU and the host kernel. So there is a kind of translation made by QEMU from vert queue descriptors to IO Euring queue entries and vice versa. So if, if we don't need the features of QEMU block layer, for example, if we are using raw files or devices, we can bypass it and pass through the IO Euring queues directly in the guest kernel memory. So to realize IO Euring pass-through, the submission and completion queues are mapped in the guest memory, and we modify the vert IO block driver to use this new short path instead of, instead of vert queues. It will submit and reheap requests directly from the SQ and CQ rings. We use a registered event FD in IO Euring to inject interrupt in the guest when there are new CQE available. Also, if we implement in, uh, polling strategies where we disable these notifications. About polling, we use a set of patches developed by Stefan and Oxy to enable the device polling through Linux block IO poll interface in the vert IO block driver. We modify it to poll the completion queue in order to avoid interrupts. In the host, we, we enable the SQ polling to avoid notification from the guest, reducing the VM exit. And we also enable the IO polling to avoid the interrupts from the hardware device. In order to share submission and completion queues with the guest, we needed some changes in IO Euring. The first one was a way to enable and disable event FD notification at runtime. 
We use this feature to disable interrupting the guest when we are polling the completion queue. The second change are the most important part. We need a way to restrict the operations allowed in an IOU ring context to safely share the rings with untrusted processes or guests. I put a link to a good article on lwhand.net about this feature that we will discuss in the next slides. The last change concerns memory translation, because IO Uring expect host virtual addresses, but the driver in the guest use guest, phys guest physical addresses. So we need a mechanism to register the memory mapping, allowing IO Uring to translate these addresses. Unfortunately, this feature is not yet available. As we saw, we had the possibility to restrict the IO Uring queues to share them with the guest. For example, we don't want to allow a guest to use all file descriptors opened by TMU or to do any kind of operations. We want to enable only some operation like read, write, fsync on a subset of file descriptor. So, with the higher Uring restriction feature, we can install an allow list on an higher Uring context and only the operation defined in that list can be executed. This also prevents that a new IOUring features accidentally become available for the guest. The allow list can be installed using the IOUring register system call, but the rings must start disabled using the R disable flag during the setup. In this state, no operation can be submitted. When the restrictions are installed, we can enable the ring processing using the enable rings opcode with IOUring register system code. This allows us to avoid critical races between the creation of the rings and the installation of the restrictions. With the allow list, we can restrict the IOUring register opcodes, for example, disabling the possibility to register new buffers or file descriptors. In this way, the guest can use only the file descriptors that we already registered. We can also limit the SQE opcodes, allowing only a subset of operation, and we can specify which SQE flags are allowed or required for each operation. For example, if we want that each SQE uses only the file descriptor registered, we need to require that the fixed file flag must be set in each, in each SQE. With this mechanism implemented in IO Uring, we can safely share submission and completion queues with a guest. We realized a proof of concept to analyze the performance and we compared it with bare metal and vertio block device simulation in QMU that we saw some slides ago. In our test, we run FIO with IO Uring engine and 4K block sites. We measured the number of IO operations per second that we put in the vertical axis. So the, the unit is kilo IOPS, so 1000 IO operations per second. And the results are really encouraging since, in the worst case, where IO depth is 1. There is only one request in flight. And in this case, the gap between IOUring pass through and bare metal is less than 13%. So this gap is caused by the fact that we, we have to cross twice the Linux block layer, one time in the guest and another one in the host. As we can see, increasing the number of operation in flight, the gap go to zero. Compared with Virtio block device simulation in QEMU, the first, the first bar in the graph, we are always faster as we skip a big piece of software stack and we avoid the, trans, the, the translation from VertQ to IOURing queues. An alternative to IOUring pass-through is to move the device simulation in the kernel using vhost. 
Also in this case, we will have a single communication channel, since the word queue is shared between guest and host kernels. In the last years, some vhost block implementation was published upstream, but never merged. The first version, from Asus, used the BIO API, the lowest API just up to the block driver drivers. The second version, from Vitali, moved to VFS API. This allows us to use also raw files stored in a file system. VFS adds some overhead, of course, but it's negligible, and it's also the same interface used by IO Uring. So I compared this last version with IO Uring pass through, improving a bit the implementation, adding VertQ and block device polling. I run the same FIO configuration that we saw before. Uh, the first bar is obtained without polling, so it's the original version. In the second bar, I added the VertQ polling in the VHost block emulation, so we avoided the notification from the guest. In the yellow bar, we enable the block IO polling, so we do busy wait in the host kernel, avoiding interrupts from the device. And in the green bar, we enable SQ polling in FIO running in the guest. As you can see, also with polling, there is still a gap with IO Uring pass through, and it should be related to the rings allocation. With vhost block, the vert queue and the descriptors are allocated in the guest memory, so the host kernel must call copy in and copy to for each request. This is not needed with IO Uring pass-through, where the submission and completion queues are allocated in the host kernel, and then mapped in the guest memory. As I said, vhost block was never merged upstream, but recently a new framework has been developed, especially to offload VertQ processing to the hardware. This framework is called VDPA. Vert.io data path acceleration. Our idea is to implement a VDPA block software device very similar to VHost block but using this new framework. This allows us to unify the software stack and reuse the same code, for example in QEMU, when hardware implementation will be available. In addition, with VDPA, we have more control than VHost on device lifecycle and the guest pages are pinned in memory, so we don't need to memory map user buffers or do copy in and copy to for each descriptors. This should allow us to fill the gap with the Uring pass-through. On the other hand, the pinned pages don't allow us to overcommit the guest memory, and we also need to implement the polling strategies and BFS integration that we are already available in IO Uring. Concluding, in the next months we will implement a proof of concept of VDPA block software device, starting from a VDPA block simulator in the kernel, then we will add the support of VDPA block on QEMU, and we will develop the Linux VDPA driver with the device emulation and BFS integration. We will also work on the block IO poll optimization for the vert IO block driver, and we will try to add the missing features to IO Uring to complete the IO Uring pass through implementation. So, thank you very much, and now it's time for questions.